Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on creating realistic smoke elements in Unreal Engine 5. In this tutorial we will learn how to use stock footage as smoke elements and we will learn to seamlessly blend smoke into a scene using the depth fade function within Unreal Engine. The first step is to acquire some stock footage that we can use into our scene. I've left a link in the description on which you can download the smoke element that you see on screen. Feel free to use your own elements if you'd like to. If you've downloaded the files that I linked in the description, you'll find into the folder that all of these files are in MP4 format. Unreal Engine is capable of reading this format, but I didn't find it to be the most stable. So what I'd like to do is to convert this video format to a JPEG sequence. I'd like to use Media Encoder for this. So what I'm going to do is just going to select this fog element that I'd like to use. And then from here, you can select the format in which you want to convert it to. So I've selected JPEG and left everything with the default settings. So put your output location and you press the play button to convert it. So here we are in Unreal Engine 5. I set up this little example scene just by going into the Quixel bridge and dragging in a couple of Megascan assets. The first step that we should take is to go over to media and create image media source. We'll just call this smoke element 01. We'll double click it. And then over here at the sequence path, we can select our image sequence. I already ran to the folder, so you can see here just selecting my ground fog. And you can just select the first frame and it will take the entire sequence. So press OK and press save. The next step is to create a media player asset. This media player asset is able to load in our image sequence. It's also able to generate a media player texture. And this media player texture we can then use on our card to play the image sequence correctly. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So the first step is to right click, go to media and create a media player. Then it gives you this little window which tells you that it is also able to output a texture asset. And for sure we will do that because that's also what we need. So press OK. So let's rename the media player by pressing F2. And we'll just call this smoke element media player. And we'll rename the texture as well. Smoke element media player texture. We now have to tell our media player to play the image sequence. So we can do so by double clicking it and then here double clicking the image sequence. So we can do that and you can now see that the image sequence is playing. And now you can just press save. The next step is to create a plane on which you can play the image sequence. So let's do that right now. We can go here on the plus sign and we can go to shapes and create a plane. You can see that it's now out there in the distance. It will just drag it towards us a little bit. Just going to scale it up, rotate it, and just type here 90 degrees. I'm also just going to scale it down a little bit. So it's a little bit more like this. Maybe push it a little bit out like that. And this should be fine for now. Let's create a shader for our smoke element. So by doing so, we can drag the media texture onto the plane. And this will create a new material. We can open this up to make some changes to make the smoke look good. The texture that we have that we inputted, remember it's a JPEG, so it doesn't have any transparency information. So we're going to make some changes to make this work. First of all, uh, we're going to change the element itself, uh, the material to a, a translucent type. So let's connect the RGB texture towards the emissive color. And we're gonna connect the red channel uh, to create our alpha. Just like that. I'm just going to move this aside a little bit because we're going to build two controls in so that we can control the opacity and the intensity of the color later on when we create a material instance. So let's do that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a multiply node. And we're going to connect both of these up, each of their multiply nodes. So I'm just going to connect this here. We can connect that to the emissive color and for the red channel the same we can connect it here to the a input and connect it to the opacity here one on your keyboard and press left click on your mouse you can create a new constant 
we can convert this to a parameter and this way we can control it into material instance uh, later. So let's do that. I'm going to call this alpha amount like that. Do this again, hold one, left click and convert this to another parameter. I will call this RGB intensity like that. Let's give it a default value of 10. I'm just over cranking it a little bit so we can see the effect. And then we can later change this to a more uh, proper value when we, once we have it into the material instance. Connect this to the B input and also this one connected to the B input. We can then press save and now our material should be uh, semi ready. The card is looking a bit weird right now, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a moment. The first step is to create a material instance so we can play this in real time and change the parameters later. So let's go to right click and create material instance. And you can see that we have the instance right now. Now, if we select the instance, we can drag it onto the texture here. And this way we are sure that it's also on the card. Okay, so now that we have a material instance set up, let's actually make the texture work in the viewport. Let's press right click and go to animation and create a level sequence. Double click on sequence here and here we can scroll through and we can actually play stuff. Let's go ahead and add the media player in here. So we'll go click on track and we'll click on media track. And then here at media, we'll select the image media source. Still, it's not playing. We have to do one more thing. We can go here to edit section and at the media texture, we have to select the texture that we used. So let's select the right texture, smoke element media player texture and press OK. And now directly you can see that the, the, the weird white board there has disappeared. So it's actually working, um, but you can see that it's just not that visible at this point. And this is where the material instance comes in really handy. So here we can just enable our custom settings and it's always a bit of a balancing act between the two. I'm just going to crank this up by a lot, just to see the texture itself in a scene. And this way you can see it's very visible. And we can always go in and just play with the alpha a little bit, get the right settings between the two. But you can see that we're running into one problem here. You can see that it is a very harsh line intersecting between the geometry and the image texture. So let's fix that. We have to introduce one more node to our material, and this is going to make it look really good. And it's called the depth fade. So let's open up our material. And we're going to make one more change to this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And I'm looking for the input towards the opacity. So here you can see that we're multiplying the amount and we're going to add the depth fade node. So over here, let's create two more constants and convert this to a parameter right away. So this one we'll call depth fade opacity. And this other one we'll just call depth fade fade distance. Connect these up to the input. And for now, I'm just going to give them a default value of one. So this one as well. And to get this into the, uh, the pipeline here, I'm just going to add a multiply node. Connect this to A and connect this to opacity. And then over here, connect this to B. So that's it. We can save it. So now that we have everything correctly set up, you're ready to witness the power of the depth fade node. So let's double click on the material instance. So the depth fade fade distance, I'm just going to put in a value something like 250. And directly you can start to see uh, that the smoke is now blending in really well with the environment. What's next is just a bit of tweaking between all the values. You know, you can just dial this a little bit lower, maybe lower this alpha value a little bit. It's up to you to make this look good. But then if you play in the sequencer, I'm just going to show you as a comparison by turning uh, the depth fade on and off, you can see what kind of difference that makes. And that's it. As a little bonus, I also would like to show you uh, the setup, how you can create uh, some really cool mist using the depth fade node. So what you can see here is just a very simple radial gradient that I connected also with a multiply and a depth fade node. It's basically the same way that we set up the smoke texture. 
So just by pressing save and I've put on an instance on it again, you can see that we can get some really nice effects in creating some smoke. So once again, I can also just go in and change some of the values here. So maybe change this to like uh, 2000 to just make it a little bit smaller, the little fog, or maybe something like 400. We get this really thick looking fog, or we can really stretch that out, put it at like something like 3000. And you can see that this is a really nice way, a really quick way to get some uh, really controllable mist. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Think about subscribing to the channel. I have some more content coming up and I'll see you on the next one.